Sibyl, you had two near-death experiences. The first one at age 17. How do you remember these experiences? Well, I still remember these near-death experiences very well. At that time, I was visiting a market in a nearby town together with my boyfriend. It was a summer evening, and it was really very hot. We had arranged to meet with friends, and while we were standing there on the central square discussing what to do and where to go, suddenly all sounds became softer. It was rather loud, and there were many people around us, but I heard almost nothing. And when looking around, everything was green, I mean with a green tinge. And somehow, everything gradually became even quieter. Sounds gradually became muffled. And then, suddenly, I turned my eyes toward the east. So I suddenly went through different stages of my life, starting right from birth, comparable with a slideshow, as if I would be inside some kind of tunnel, or as if you were sitting in a moving train. And at the end of this film of life, so to speak, a wooden crucifix was closing in on me, and then I passed out. I suddenly fainted, and all at once, I could see myself from about 10 to 15 yards away from the group. They had formed a circle around me, and there I was, lying on the ground, but I wasn't able to recognize and place the meaning of this in its proper context. And I found myself thinking, why am I now 10 to 15 yards away from this group? I could hear everything very clearly, which means I could very well understand what they were talking about. They said things like, what's up with her? Get her a drink. And then I could see that it was my body which was lying there. And exactly at this moment, all I thought about was, why can I see my body lying there? Why am I here? I am just standing here, only somewhat farther away. Then I went back to the group, assuming that they would see me, because I really hadn't understood that I was outside my body. But they didn't move. I really had to force myself by saying to them, don't touch my body. But because no one could hear me, and also because all of them were just staring at my body, my face was pale, and I mean, my whole body was snow white. Then I slipped back into my body purely by instinct. I don't know how to describe this any other way. Then I opened my eyes, and again the sounds became even quieter. That means the auditory sense was not completely back again, but the green tinge had disappeared. Then I drank some water, and helped by my boyfriend, I tried to stand up slowly. He said, I'll bring you home now. You probably had a circulatory collapse. At that moment, when I went back into my body, opening my eyes, I felt incredibly strong. I felt stronger than ever and also very self-confident. At that time, neither my self-confidence nor my self-esteem was strong. I always felt a great inferiority, and I always tried to please everybody. But after this experience, I had the feeling that it's not necessary to try to please everybody. I actually wanted nothing to do with these people. I felt that they were not my friends, 
but false friends, and that they were not supportive of me. So I said to my boyfriend, yes, please bring me home. But I actually wanted to go for a walk with him alone, and that is what we did, but only at home. For a long time, I did not talk about my experience. I mean, I didn't talk about it at all because I hadn't fully understood what had happened to me. This near-death experience, then, has had a long-term impact on your self-confidence and your self-esteem, which improved afterwards. Yes, it improved dramatically, when I woke up, I had quite a different view. Let us return to this near-death experience. Do you remember this film of life or the imagery you saw? No, the only thing I can recollect is that I saw myself as a baby, how I was born, and I also remember a scene with my brother. When we were children, we quarreled a lot. I can also remember all my relatives, my mother and the friends I had, but not the whole film of life, because this happens so quickly in rapid succession, which means that the film of life was pretty fast. Did this wooden crucifix have a special meaning for you? I'm not religious, that means not really, yet it was closing in on me. First it was very small, but then it got increasingly bigger, and at the moment when I saw it before me, I passed out. Maybe this caught me off guard. This crucifix was like a pain for me, a tremendous pain. Maybe it was a symbolic pain. It really was a massive crucifix. And actually, I did not see anything or anybody else. That means neither apparitions of the angel nor any other apparitions, but only this crucifix. At a later time, after the birth of your child, you had another near-death experience. This was in 212, yes. The birth of the baby was difficult, requiring an emergency cesarean section. I tried for 10 hours to birth the baby, but unfortunately without success. At 7 a.m., the lady doctor came in to say, well, now we have to help the baby into the world. We cannot hear fetal heart tones anymore. Three days later, I was pumped with chemicals, and also during labor, I was provided with an analgesics pump for the treatment of pain. My facial skin color was rather yellowish. Obviously, my internal organs had been affected by the medication. Then I changed my room because I had found a private room in hospital. This was because I wanted to be in peace after this shock, so to speak. I was pretty much in a state of shock given all that had happened to me, and I was also very tired. But I remember looking at my son all the time because I found him so beautiful. I could hardly sleep in spite of being so exhausted. Then, I think, I fell asleep, but about 3 a.m. I woke up and found that I was looking down at my body and my baby from the ceiling. And I just thought that it's so nice to see these two beings sleeping deeply and soundly. However, I wondered why I was there on the ceiling. Behind me, I felt a warm, bluish light. And this was a very pleasant feeling for me. Everything was lighter, 
and I was fine, but suddenly I realized that the baby and I were lying there and that I couldn't leave the baby so abruptly and also that I didn't want to do so. I would have preferred to remain dead, staying in this light, but I wanted to go back and I also had to do so. I just heard my own voice saying that I would have to go back and that it was my desire to do so because the baby was alone and because I couldn't leave him like that. At the moment when I went back into my body, it was like an earthquake. The whole bed was vibrating, and this caused a big noise. First I was sitting in my body, which means first I was sitting in the body, and then I gradually slipped into my head from behind, so to speak. During the big noise, I heard everything at once, Again, my film of life, from the past right to the present, when I was back again into my body. I also was afraid that the baby might wake up, because this noise was so loud, comparable to a train breaking, of a freight train, for example. So it was very loud. Additionally, there was the vibrating bed and all these things which would happen in future. I saw everything that my boyfriend at that time had done and also what he would do. Today, he is no longer my partner. Then I woke up and became quite angry. Due to the situation, I think that I sweated a lot. I was very wet all over my body, soaking wet, in fact. And first of all, of course, I looked after the baby, whether he was still sleeping or whether he had been awakened by the noise. I was very excited, in a state of agitation, I thought that this might have been the worst nightmare, but gradually, of course, I tried to calm down. I still remember my heart palpitations of that moment and the increased heart rate. Nevertheless, I didn't call for the nurse, but I really tried to go through all these impressions and visions I had had, everything at the same time. Afterwards, everything happened exactly as it had been presented to me, even though I ignored it for a long time, because of course I refused to believe all of this. That means that these bad things will really happen as I had foreseen them. How far into the future did this vision project? I would say about a year into the future. I think that I didn't see any further than that. You mean, above all, in connection with your partner at that time? Yes, exactly, in connection with the baby and my partner. Above all, with the partner. I saw what he had done previously, and that is why I could hardly believe it. Until one day, of course, it came to light. I always say that everything comes to light one day. What impact did these experiences have on your future life? Above all, I am looking for answers. After the separation, I am really and truly looking for answers to my questions as to why this happened and how it was possible for me to foresee it and as to why such things can happen at all. Actually, I felt a bit chastised or punished, and although I'm neither devout nor religious, I meanwhile have returned to God. I don't know how to express this more precisely. I also pray regularly now, and I feel that I am getting better and better. Sibyl, how did these near-death experiences change your view of a life after death. Before, I didn't believe that there is life after death. 
and that religions and other spiritual currents only want to calm people down in order to avoid fear. Meanwhile, however, I have experienced death very differently. That is to say that there is a life after death, and now I no longer feel a fear of death, but I am rather concerned about the bereaved. I would like to go back home sometimes, but as long as I have not performed my task, I will gladly keep to his rules and commandments. <laughs> Sibyl, dear, thank you so very much for the interview.